Good morning again. Good afternoon. Good evening for some of you who are watching on uh, video on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching us online. Well, today uh, we're still in the Lord's Prayer. And this is the prayer of surrender. And um, I have to ask, have you ever wondered what to pray? Well, the Lord's Prayer gives us, you know, a model. And have you caught this, noticed what we're doing? We're going through each phase, each phrase. And um, today we're going to look at the third phrase in this prayer. You know, have you ever noticed it's so easy to lose your peace? One minute, everything's fine, everything's serene. But a mere phone call stresses you out. It's so easy to lose your, your, your peace. Well, today we're going to look at what to pray when your circumstances are uncontrollable. When people around you are unchangeable, when problems are unexplainable, and we need to pray the third part of the Lord's Prayer, is prayer of surrender. Matthew 6.10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Hmm. Well, that's God's plan for history. When all of his purposes will be accomplished. See, the God, God's kingdom is wherever God is allowed to be king. Now, Jesus is king in heaven. And when Christ comes back to earth, the kingdom of God will be on earth. And Jesus says, when I'm, in your, when I'm king in your heart, the kingdom of God is in you. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's pretty, that's that wrap your mind around that. <laughs> and the second part of this, thy will be done, explains thy kingdom come. And today we're going to look at how thy kingdom come, thy will be done, can be a life-changing message. But we've got to settle this first. There's one thing we've got to settle. God is God, and you're not. And I'm not. And we can't be at peace until we accept that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We've prayed that many times. But do we mean it? That what it means is I accept God's plan. I accept God's purpose. His will for my life. And I admit it's tough. That's accepting things you can't change. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> you didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose when you'll die. You don't choose what other people might do to you. You just got to accept the things that can't be changed. And, you know, worry doesn't give you peace. 
Resenting what you can't change doesn't give you peace. Feeling guilty about the past won't give you peace. There's only one thing that will. Accepting God's will, His perfect will for your life. Now, not everything that happens, you know, in our lives is God's will. But you have to say, God, I want your will in my life when I can't change things. Paul says in Philippians 4, 11 and through 13, I've learned to be satisfied with the things that I have and with everything that happens. Anybody with, anybody with Paul on that one? Not me. <laughs> Sorry, you know. He says, I know how to live when I'm poor, and I know how to live when I have plenty. I've learned the secret of being happy in everything that happens. I can do all things through Christ because he gives me strength. Now, understand this. Paul wrote these words when he was in a dungeon chained to a guard. And still, he learned to accept God's plan. But by very nature, we're not contented. But we got to learn to accept the things that we can't change. Second, Paul says, I choose to be happy in spite of my circumstances. And then he says, it's possible only through Christ's strength. Have you noticed that God doesn't explain why most things happen in our life? He doesn't explain why. Back many, 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 many years ago, <laughs> In my college days, we were, uh, we'd be given an empty blue book. I'm not sure why they had to be blue, but they were. They were blue. The cover was blue. They were our test booklets. And we just, you know, then he'd write a, he or she would write a question up on the board. And we were to fill that book. And the professor would sit there in total silence while we took the test. Same's true with God. You're having a tough time and God is silent. You're praying, God, why is this happening? What's going on? And God's silent. Anytime that God's silent in your life, it's a test. God's saying, are you going to trust me? Even when you don't feel me or see me or hear me, and you feel like I'm a million miles away, will you still accept my plan and wisdom? my love and my, my goodness, even when I'm silent? Well, that's when the prayer of surrender comes in. God, I just don't know what's going on or where I'm going to end up. But thy will be done. Now that's faith. 
Why did you allow this, Lord? Well, you're probably not going to get an explanation <laughs> from God. <laughs> God doesn't owe us an explanation. He doesn't report to us. We report to Him. And that's all right. Because He's good and loving and knows what's best. And secondly, we probably wouldn't understand the explanation even if He gave it to us. Because God sees the eternal now. The past, the present, the futures. So instead of offering an explanation, He offers something even better. He offers Himself. God says, I will be with you always. There's three things that brings peace. Accepting, trusting, and surrender. But, but how often do we do the exact opposite and just give up and wallow in self-pity instead of praying this prayer of surrender? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, God, in heaven, God's will is done perfectly. But most things on earth are not in God's will. So when you pray, thy will be done, you're surrendering to God's control. And not only accept his plan, but accept the why. Now we don't like submission, but it's the only way to peace. Well, God wants me to be happy. Well, you're not going to be happy unless you do what God wants you to do. And if we're trying to play God, you're in opposition to Him. Psalm 37, 7, verse 7. Surrender yourself to the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Anybody else have that problem but me? <laughs> yeah. Waiting patiently? Now, Romans 8, 6 tells us what happens if we don't. Romans 8, 6. If a person's thinking is controlled by his sinful self, there is death. But if his thinking is controlled by the Spirit, there is life and peace. The 22nd chapter of Job tells us how to get that peace. Stop quarreling with God. Anybody ever done that? Argued with God? See, it says if you agree with Him, you'll have peace at last and things will go well with you. What is it that keeps you from surrendering, surrendering your life completely to God? Hmm. Are you blaming Him for your unhappiness? Oh, that's silly. <laughs> is it? What is it in your life that you're still angry and resentful at God about? Do 
Just relax and say, God, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. I accept your plan and surrender to your control. If we don't do that and mean it, you're having a war with God and it's keeping you from peace. Simply trust, and it's hard, I know, trust in God's care and guidance that He's going to provide for you. Your life is never going to be trouble free. You're always going to have problems. But you have to learn how to have peace in spite of your problems and your conflicts. But why do we have so many problems in the world? Well, the first reason it's fallen. Adam blew it. It was all her fault, but no, no, joke, joke. But seriously, it's a fallen world. The second thing is, the reason for problems, is this old enemy named Satan. And he wants to destroy you. Third, thirdly, is, is our own uh, poor decisions. Who? Who don't like that one? It's not my fault. <laughs> Sometimes it is. And then finally, Sometimes problems are nobody's fault. And God allows them for different reason. Jesus was walking down the street one day and the, his disciples saw a man who was born blind. And the disciples said, Lord, who sinned? Was it his parents or, or was it his sin? And Jesus responded, it's written in John 9, 3, neither. This happened so that God's power could be displayed in this man's life. You trust God enough to let him take care of all your needs? Are you really at peace? Or are you experiencing anxiety and stress over something that you haven't yielded to God? Romans 6 verse 13 reads, Give yourself to God. Surrender your whole being to Him to be used for His righteous purposes. Surrender. Surrender all that you are to Him today. And He simply wants us to say, Thy will be done in my life and on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray together. Father God, we come before You and we... Um, Lift up everyone who's so stressed out from this COVID thing. It just seems to uh, keep coming against us. Stressed out from worry and resentment. Stressed out from the need to control everything. Struggling with the issue of complete surrender. Well, I ask, can, can, can you sincerely pray, Father, this message was for me. And you know how I've resented the things in my life that caused me pain. Help me to stop fighting over the things I don't understand 
I want your peace. And I pray this prayer of surrender. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. And help me to live that every day. Help me to accept your plan for my life. And I surrender to your control and trust in your care. And amen.